Buenos dias, my friends, and welcome to today's video. Today, I'm in the provinces just outside of Buenos Aires in a beautiful town called San Antonio de Areco. This city is famous for not only being, you know, very pretty and having a nice little colonial center, but specifically for its gaucho culture or the very traditional cowboy life of the Pampas region of Argentina. Today, I'm gonna head to a traditional parilla that is a Argentinian grill to eat some delicious meat and tell you a little bit about the grill culture and then we are going to head to an estancia to uh, ride some horses. So if that sounds good, let's get gauchero. Vamos. In Argentina, there is one word that reigns supreme in its culinary sphere. Parilla. Dating back to the gaucho days of the 1800s, the parilla stands for all things meat. Life on the pampas meant gauchos didn't have access to conventional cooking utilities, so that meant that they turned to what they had, steel, fire, and beef. Today, the parilla is the lifeblood of Argentinian food culture, something you'll see on nearly every street corner throughout the country. You can imagine it smoke wafting heavily through the air, steak sizzling away, coals hissing from the fat, lovingly basting whatever graces the grill. It's an art, it's a passion, it's truly Argentina. Hey, wow. Okay, gracias. Now we're at the table at the classic parilla that is grill in the Argentinian Spanish. We're just in a backyard, it's very casual, we're drinking some, uh, you know, reasonably cheap wine and uh, waiting for some meat. But first, a beautiful empanada, the most common food in Argentina. If we rip it open, we can see a beautiful filling. Let's see how it tastes. Super good. It's a nice beef and carrot, maybe a little garlic, maybe a little potatoes. Has an overall kind of like sweet and savory flavor. It's very enjoyable. The main course has already arrived super fast. All the meat is cooking in the front in these big grills, which you guys just saw. So what they do is they cut everything and they put it on a little hot plate for you. And it comes out looking something like this. So on the typical parija plate, you have blood sausage, chorizo, uh, something that's like chicharrones. You have um, pork ribs, some intestines, which look really good and then some uh, some beef and some chicken. So for 2,700 pesos, which is about, I don't know, something like 12 euros, 13 euros, you're gonna get this much meat. You can get a little salad if that's what you're into, and then the really typical salsas that they have here in this part of the world, chimichurri, which is a mix of spices with some oil, some garlic, and then something that's more like a traditional salsa. You eat it all with some bread, and buen provecho. The fact of the matter is that you guys already know how this tastes. It's all unbelievable grilled meat. Really just salt. There's no other spices that are really um, detectable on the, on the meat in general. And it's cooked over open coals and wood. So it has a little bit of a smoky taste. What I'm particularly curious about is this guy, which is an, it seems like intestine, which is nice and smoky. So we're gonna give that a try. That one is particularly very crunchy. The intestine gets like really nice and nice and crisp. Very fatty as well. And the one that I love to show people that most people don't understand from abroad is the love for morcilla, which is blood sausage. So typically they take an intestine casing and they stuff it with blood and rice. Although I'm not sure there's gonna be rice in here. And the blood hardens with other spices to create this kind of like really nice paste or pate. So in this one, it seems there is no rice. They have big pieces of fat, the congealed blood with spices, and the casing. The casing is nice and it snaps really deliciously. It smells delicious and there's nothing bloody or gross about it. So next time you're in Argentina, try some morcilla. The question is, how does it taste? For me, the texture is rich and decadent. It's very fatty. It's very satisfying if you're like a meat eater. And it's all the savory flavors that you want in meat. 
in something different. So we've made it now to Estancia Sinacina on the western side of the city of San, San Antonio de Areco. It's a very, very small city. Um, I don't know how many people live here. It can't be more than like 10,000 to be honest. So walking out of the city center, um, pretty easy. Once you get out of the city center, however, you head into the Pampas, which is this really beautiful, really like, let's say, nice grazing area that has a lot of significance to the Argentinian people. Um, it's kind of a really big part of the identity of what Argentina is and it's where a lot of their let's say like Agricultural sector is based so I kind of think of this as the kind of Texas range or the the sort of like uh, You know the Midwest of, of Argentina. So here they're well known for their cattle raising uh, They're of course their Argentina is well known for beef in general and of course the gaucho lifestyle. And I will explain more of what a gaucho is, but we are here on the Estancia and it's this super beautiful, just outdoor area. And we're here for one reason. And the reason is to ride some horses, some traditional gaucho lifestyle stuff. So let's hop on some horses. We're gonna ride around. I'm gonna tell you about the gaucho life. Ooh. Okay, easy buddy. So there's probably no better place to tell you guys about gauchos than on the back of a good old horse. So the gauchos are the cowboys of Argentina, of Uruguay, and of the Rio de la Plata in the south part of Brazil. The gauchos, the gauchos typically are mestizo, so it means that they are half uh, native Spanish and half um, indigenous American and they were known as sort of the gatekeepers of this pompous region and they were mostly in charge of handling cattle and doing uh, let's say sort of rural tasks. The gaucho is something like today is kind of thought of as this brave noble character that lives on the plains um, that was very responsible for a lot of a lot of the success and a lot of the military fighting that was uh, done during the civil wars in Argentina in the 1800s, especially for the War of Independence. So the gaucho has become kind of this like kind of this symbol of a brave noble person in today's Argentina, and this kind of part of this comes from also uh, um, literature as well in the Argentinian sort of style. While the gauchos are very traditional and very revered today, there was sort of a mixed influence on how the gauchos were perceived throughout the different time periods here in Argentina. There was one time period where they were seen as sort of outlaws or people that were sort of like banditos, bandits that they have in Mexico, you know? So people who were often stealing things, who were often stealing cattle, rustling cattle as it goes and people who were often seen as sort of just bad overall guys. The typical gaucho, as you can see in this picture, always wears a knife and they're very notorious fighters and many gauchos lost their lives fighting each other in duels over territory, over women, in bar fights. Just like the cowboys or the vaqueros as they were called in northern Mexico all those years ago. the horse now and I'm just in the Estancia you guys can see it's it's really beautiful it's lovely um, that you can see parrots and all kinds of nice stuff but the one thing I want to say that I think is very interesting for me at least is that this feels like home and what do I mean by that okay there are no palm trees in New Mexico but we have an area on the Rio Grande called the Valle Norte or the North Valley and the North Valley is home to very large houses estancias or haciendas as we call them in the north um, they have basically open land for horses for cattle for whatever and people grow meat outside normally we do things called matanza so matanza is where you kind of cook an entire pig here they have the parija which is about beef 
same sort of situation. And what's really striking to me is that this land and the land all the way to the north, we're talking all the way to New Mexico, the Spanish Empire held at one point. In a time before cell phones, in a time before the internet, in a time before Morse code, the Spanish Empire established a land grab that went from the tip of South America to Oregon. I mean, if that's not astounding, I don't really know what is. And for me, that's why I think Argentina, it just feels like a place I know all too well, even though I'm only in my second day here. So just a little look into the life of rural Argentina, into the life of the Pampas, a little story about the gauchos, the fighting men of the Pampas itself. So if you have any questions about Argentina, please comment below. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell, always helpful to me. Today was just a little tour. Today we have, and tomorrow, we have much more interesting content coming from various locations around Buenos Aires and in this beautiful country of Argentina. Thank you guys for watching and hasta luego.